If you're cruising in or out of beautiful Vancouver, Canada, the stunning Capilano Suspension Bridge Park is a must-see experience. Walk along a 400-foot-long suspension bridge, experience the lush rainforest from the treetops, and stroll along a gravity-defined platform that's cantilevered off a cliff. And did I mention they also have amazing food? In this episode of The Chill Cruiser, I'll share my experience at the park along with 10 tips to help you plan your visit. Hey cruisers, Andrew from Ottawa, Canada here. Welcome to The Chill Cruiser, where I review premium cruise ships from a chill perspective, sharing tips on how to help you save time, money, and grief on your cruise vacations. Today, I wanna to share my experience at the Capilano Suspension Bridge Park before an Alaskan cruise out at Vancouver in May. I had seen the bridge in one of my favorite Hallmark movies, Don't Forget I Love You. Don't judge, it's got a fairly original story. But I didn't realize until I started planning my cruise that Capilano was actually one of the most visited attractions in British Columbia. If you're cruising in or out of Vancouver, you're in luck because the park is only a few minutes drive from the port and the bridge is just one of the many great experiences it offers. Not surprisingly, it was a rainy day on my cruise embarkation day. Also not surprising that the cruise port was a mess crowded with thousands of people. If you're planning a cruise out of Vancouver, don't miss my video on the eight things you need to know before embarkation day here. Since check-in wasn't happening anytime soon, I dropped off my bags with the porters and left the terminal. I debated whether it was a good idea to visit the park in the rain, but I thought, why not? It'll be an authentic West Coast experience. The park's website says they're open rain or shine, and that coming on a rainy day usually means less crowds. So I decided to go for it, and I'm really glad I did. They couldn't make the park easier to get to for cruise travelers, which is tip number one. The park offers a free shuttle right outside the port building that comes every 15 minutes, and it only takes about 20 minutes to get there, which lets you see some beautiful Vancouver scenery on the way, including parts of Stanley Park. That brings me to tip number two, visit the park on your own and not as part of a shore excursion to save money and also to make sure you can spend all the time you want there. I spent close to three hours and could have stayed longer. More on that later. Tip number three is buy your tickets in advance on their website and reserve your arrival time to save a few dollars and minutes of time lining up at the entrance. Pre-purchasing also guarantees you'll get in at your preferred time on busy days. An adult day pass purchased online is $67 Canadian or around $50 US. If you visit after 5 p.m., the on online cost drops to $53 Canadian, or around $40 US. The park is stunning the moment you walk through the entrance, with beautiful walkways and totem poles throughout, as well as educational kiosks about the ecology of the area and the history of the park itself. These kiosks are mostly covered, which is a good thing since it rained the entire time I was there. That brings me to tips four and five. Bring a compact umbrella and wear waterproof hiking shoes. It might be obvious for West Coasters, but not so much for folks like me from the East Coast. Even if it's a nice day when you leave for the park, the weather can change. The park sells rain ponchos, but you're still going to get soaked if it does rain. I wore waterproof hikers, and it was one of the best decisions I made the entire vacation because my feet were still bone dry after hours in the rain. If you're going on an Alaskan cruise, they'll come in handy for your adventures there as well. Suspension bridge is one of the first things you'll see, so naturally you're going to want to get on it as soon as you can. That brings me to tip number five. Bring a backpack for your umbrella and other items because you're going to want your hands free while you're on the bridge. The bridge is mostly steady, but it can sway. So you're going to need at least one hand free to hold the railing at first to get your balance. You're also gonna need a free hand to take lots of pictures. I'm not that afraid of heights, but I must admit once the bridge started swaying, I did panic for a few seconds. The bridge has people walking both ways, so it can feel a bit overwhelming at first. That's why having your hands free is so important. So you can hold the railing, take a breath, and walk across at your pace. Once you're oriented and settled, you'll love it and you'll want to take hundreds of pictures. Bringing me to tip number six, make sure your camera has several gigs of free space so you can take all of the pics and videos you want. If the bridge feels too busy to take good pictures, you can cross to explore the other attractions and then just come back. Which brings me to tip number seven. There's a lot more to the park than just the suspension bridge. On the side of the main entrance is Cliff Walk, a series of narrow walkways, stairs, and viewing platforms cantilevered from a cliff that's 30 stories above the Capilano River. On the other side of the bridge is Treetop Adventure, a series of suspension bridges that connect platforms installed more than 100 feet high in various trees. Throughout the park are beautiful walkways and lookouts that constantly prompt you to stop, breathe in the fresh air, and admire the lushness and beauty of the rainforest. The scale and layout of the park also means that with some planning, you can take some incredible pictures, especially if you have a professional grade camera with great zooming options. Tip number eight is to take a few minutes to plan some of those pictures before your visit. For example, you could take an amazing picture of your group on the bridge from this lookout on the south entrance side, or on one of the treetop bridges from another bridge. 
There's kiosks to grab hot and cold drinks and snacks throughout the park. My favorite was the Cliff House restaurant that's connected to the large souvenir store close to the main entrance. Tip number nine is to spend some time here. I sat at the bar for a refreshing pint of local beer and these delicious meatballs garnered with a side of garlic bread and balsamic glaze. This appetizer ended up being the best entree I had the entire vacation. That's including the cruise since Princess has joined the other cruise lines and significantly cutting down on portion size and food quality. In the end, I spent more than three hours at the park, so my final tip is to budget at least that amount of time for your visit, if not more, since it was raining and not that crowded. On a beautiful sunny day, I would probably would have lingered even longer. Okay, that's a wrap for this episode. If you're curious about what it's like to take a princess cruise to Alaska out of Vancouver, check out my full review here. If you love the chill side of cruising and are interested in tips on how to save time, money, and grief on your cruise vacations, please subscribe to this channel to make sure you don't miss any valuable intel. Thank you for watching and happy cruising.